Hello and welcome to Ticking All The Boxes for this week's edition where we're going to have a look at Warwick Farm on Saturday. Um, it's meant to be 400 degrees in Sydney on Saturday, Nick Ashman, and yeah. track at the moment on Thursday morning is a, is a dead five, but I'm, I've worked off a good three. Um, rails out three metres, how are you? I'm good. I'm tipping uh, we'll be riding by the last on Saturday. Be we'll be. That much. We'll be riding. Riding what? The last, in the last race. What are you riding? Well, I'm just saying because I'll be sweating so much. Cavalry man. <laughs> <laughs> what do I be riding? <laughs> it's a pointed question, isn't it? Oh, well. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, that was Magic Moons yesterday. Uh, it was good. Nice little lunch. Yeah. Um, cash for comment? A cash for comment. <laughs> <laughs> I know, look, they do a good job. And, of course you're going to say that. They took you out to lunch yesterday. <laughs> well, there was an English lunch apparently on the... Yeah, I know, but it's just um, bad day. Yeah. Bad day for us. Bad day for us. It's hard, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway. And you got something on this weekend? Yeah, yeah. Got some, got a function on for the family on this weekend, so I'm, I won't be at the race on Saturday, but and anyway. Friday as well? Friday I've got a wedding to go to, yes. Yeah. So it's that time of the year. It is that time of the year. Anyway, okay. all right, let's get into it. Um, <coughs> the first race, it's the Warwick Farm Plate over a 1,000 metres now for the two-year-olds. Our prices this week are courtesy of IAS Bet. Yep. And let's go through them. All, all the talk, $8. Uh, <coughs> Napa Sheeny, $11. Romantic Touch, two sixty. dollars Aspen, $3. Let's Frolic. $3. Tight market. Tight market. I you wouldn't be betting the, early here. Uh, I thought all the talk might be a little bit overs. Charlie Boy's um, trialled and raced against Charlie Boy. Uh, performed pretty good in both both efforts. And Charlie Boy looks well and truly above average. Um, did start 18 bucks, which is never the best sign against him, but uh, thought he went good enough. And the other one was the, the Snowden horse, uh, Aspen. I see an Excel out of Portillo who ran third, I think, in a golden slipper. And is, I think, from memory, a full sister to Snowland, Portillo. Okay. Um, so I just thought they might be the two. Romantic Touch goes okay. Um, don't think it's as good as the one last week. Um, and I've just got a slight query. The overall time, not that times are everything, but the overall time last week was a bit was a bit slower <laughs> certitude than um, Charlie Boy. Let me give you. Uh, it's an interesting point you make because as a rule, I'm not a times man. But with two year olds, with two year olds, especially Rose Hill two year olds over the 1100, there's a really good yardstick there over the last how many ever many years. But the good two year olds break 105. Mm -hmm. No two year olds broken 105 over the 1100 Rose Hill this year. So I've got queries over all of them. The one thing I'll say about Charlie Boy is that was a dead four and they weren't far off the 105 mark. But mm. as a rule, and, and I'm talking, you know, a period of a long time, like 10 years of decent cross-section, mm. they haven't done it yet this season. And, and it's the one genuine guide that I find is 100% solid. Uh, so little query there on... Um, all the talk, because he was two and a half lengths off them. In yeah. saying that, I think coming back to a 1,000 suits. Jason Coyle, I wrote a story about his runner later in the day on Thursday, and he made, which I think is an extremely important point heading into Saturday. They're saying it's going to be up close to 40 degrees at Warwick Farm, and Warwick Farm, it's a very dry heat you get out there, so it, it does affect you, because I know when you work there, it, you, you get a 40 degree day there compared to at Ramwick, say, it's a different heat and it's really stifling and it, it does knock you around. Um, the local horses always perform well at Rose Warwick Farm, yep. uh, but he made the point that they've probably got an extra advantage because of the heat this week where, you know, they'll be, the stewards have put it back so that horses don't have to be at the track till now before. They'll be at home with fans on them mm. and they'll be getting out of their boxes, you know, however long before and just walking straight across the road, whereas these other horses have got to get on floats. And whilst, as I said, they won't have to be there, the majority of them, for as long as they normally would, mm. they're not going to turn up 
right on the hour mark, whereas the Warwick Farm horses can because, you know, in a float there might be 10 horses, mm. so they might take the horses for race one, race two, race three. So they could still be there well over an hour period before. Yeah. Um, and that is genuinely, definitely going to play an advantage when they're sitting in a stall with the sun beating down on them in the heat, mm. tied up, whereas others are just walking around their box with the fans on them. Yep. It's got to be an advantage. It's going to keep horses a lot calmer. So, I think so, particularly with the two-year-olds as well. Well, inexperienced horses. In saying that, I didn't care where this was at. I was all over Asplin. Um, I thought a trial was outstanding. Everyone went on about how good cra Crazy on News was uh, mm. in that trial. And... Whilst it didn't win on debut, I thought it performed quite well. Mm. Aspen's trial was better than it. Uh, it got held up, never got out, and then when mm. it did get out late, it was going two to their one and doing it a lot easier than what Crazy on You, Crazy on you was. Yep. Good barrier, home track, all those other things we've mentioned. $3 isn't great, but it might look great come, yep. uh, come uh, what time? Come about five past one on Saturday so, I think yeah. drawn outside Gay's horse as well is, is, is a massive factor too because it means Nash is either going to have to kick up and leave. Well, he's going to. That's why they ride their horses, mate. That's why they trial so. them. But that's what they'll do. How many of those barrier ones with Gay's horses in the last couple of months have we seen get crossed and led? There's been a few of them. Oh, wind was probably blowing. Um, Except for that one last Saturday. Well, Certitude got crossed and led and Tommy just threw a good Yeah, well, it was... Popped off the rail and... There was no point going because Hugh was trapped wide and he wanted to go on with it. So mm. you're better off to just, just do that. All right, so that's that. Um, all the talk, by the way, is getting the winkers on for the first time. <coughs> Race two. The Cormac packaging, 1,300 metres. Hurricane Henny, $11. Soapy Star, 10 Furious Jet, 440. Office Bearer, 230. Hunter Jack, 420. And that'll do us. Uh, mate, I've gone Soapy Star here, uh, double figure price, you might be able to tell us a bit more, but um, I thought its run last start against Golden Sunshine, it came out, was pretty impressive, last start was good enough mm. for something like this, got beaten four lengths. Um, that Golden Sunshine's a bit like that last one or last Saturday, Pentasia, they sort of run pretty quick through the middle of their races and it can just take some of these other horses who are used to sort of not jogging through the middle stages, but at least getting a breather. It can take them out of their comfort zone. So I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of horses that finished behind those two winners last Saturday from Rose Hill came out and performed better, and one of them will be tipping in the last on Saturday. But I'll have something on this thing at 10 bucks for sure. Um, Chris indicated going to improve off the run. OK. Um, yeah. In saying that, it's 1-4 from 9. You know, it's record reads well. Mm. Um, I wouldn't rule her out. Okay. But uh, big weight, couple of hour float trip. Yep. To me, it's not the day for her. But okay. uh, mm -hmm. something small here on the top weight, Hurricane Henny. He's look last start. He, he sort of didn't show how good he was until he sort of got to eighteen hundred metres uh, and performed well. And then you know, in, at his last run before going out, he, he finished second to Year Ale, who. It's was definitely. going as well as what anything was over trips around that time of the year, which was back in June in the winter. I just thought he trialled really well. Uh, Gerald Ryan's horses do have a habit of trialling well, but I was, he really surprised me how well he did trial this horse, mm. most recently at Rose Hill on the 20th of November. It's not a race I'm really excited in, but I just thought at 11 bucks you could have something on him each way. In saying that, there's now a scratching in the race, another love child's out, so there's only two dividends. Makes it less attractive. Yeah. But, well, um, in that case. Yeah. yeah, so there you go. Okay. Well, well <coughs> I'm a bit the same as you then. It's, um, I thought Sophie so Star might be an each way shot at 10 bucks. But Who, sorry? I thought Sophie yeah. Star might oh, be. Oh, look, I'm not. So, she's the right price to have a little throw at the stumps, but I wouldn't be going nuts on her. No, no, I wasn't. But now that the other thing's out, she's probably not even worth the bet. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Race three. Thank you, Mick Rolfe. Benchmark 80 handicap. Mick, Mick Rolfe, that's, um, who's that, mate? Mick Rolfe. 1300, I don't know. All right, race three, Princess Layla gets the blinkers on. I think the sponsorship came through at the last minute too. Do you? That's probably why it's thank you. Probably why? Just threw some money in there, thank you, Mick Rolfe. Anyway. I don't understand. Oh, well. I'm just talking gibberish. Yeah, okay. Yep, I'll put my hand up there. What's going on? All right, market. I asked bet. 
Uh, next to the universe, 12 bucks, 550 oh, happy hussy, $7, holy moly. Misspoken, 8, 460, our design, 5, Princess Layla, Babel, 6. Mm. Um, I, uh, mate, where is it? Uh, Princess Layla was taken on last start. Um, she probably should have just about won that race. Um, <clears throat> she was a bit unlucky. Tried to, um, wanted to know what it had taken out of her, but I haven't heard back yet. Um, the, uh... Our design was scratched last weekend, had a small issue. There's a, I wrote a little article this morning. Uh, Anthony Cummings said the horse is all sweet. Had the right kind of form. Great. Uh, scratched last week because we had an issue. We'll back it seven days later. Beauty. Seven days that's, later. A, that's a recipe to the poorhouse. Uh, I've settled on Happy Hussy, though. Um, I thought if you go back, probably the, the race that is most similar to this is three runs back, with the exception of the track condition. It was run over the same course and distance in, in pretty much a similar grade and the horse you think i would have thought it was a stronger grade myself well stronger similar but stronger i would have said stronger significantly stronger with spinner witch coming out of it and well i, I think spinner witch is probably well she is a stakes performed she's horse but she's a genuine stakes class horse that's had issues mm. uh, i'm only enhancing you yeah with my what you're saying. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, i was playing it down a little bit i guess um and I think the, the fact he's David Payne's book Nash for this, um, he's had the two trials leading into it. Um, it just ticks a few boxes, as we say. Look, and uh, and given she went off there, as you're saying, harder grade at four dollars forty and favourite here, she is five fifty, easier grade on top of the ground as well. She's better on top of the ground. That was a slow track. I think she's a very good bet at five dollars fifty. No, I don't disagree. Um, I think it's a tricky race. There's, there's a couple there uh, with similar sort of credentials. Yeah. You know, Babel. She's the one that's going to get everything in a favour, along with Miss Spoken. Yep. Uh, as in, you know, trained locally on the track, all that sort of stuff. Easier time coming into the race. Uh, there's decent speed here. Horses like arm's length won't just let Princess Layla do what she wants to do up front. Uh, not a race I'm interested in, but it wouldn't surprise me to see Next the Universe improve significantly here. Mm -hmm. I thought a run first up was okay. Behind Emotional Circus, Miss Marks, Lady <coughs> LaDuce. She repeats that performance. She's right in this. She's a bit of a non-winner, but she's never far away, and she's performed at much higher level than this in the past. Carries 57.5 after the claim for Co Alicia Collett. $12. You could do sillier things than that. But I agree with what you're saying, Marie Happy Hussy. And the other one that, you know, someone tied my arm behind my back and made me have a bet would be Babel. But... Yep. Won't be getting any of mine. It's a hard race, isn't it? Because you can make, you can actually find Mate, an angle on about three or four horses. I'll be honest. I got burnt last weekend backing that Shamadani, yeah. who, in my opinion, if it repeated its previous run, it would have absolutely bolted in, and it was plain. But they're those horses at the moment. You know, they're those horses that are off-season horses. They're average horses. Yeah, they can put in a good run. You know, they just don't run. I find they don't run consistently true as in the better horses. You know, you, yeah. you will get some, but I just got burnt and I won't be firing up again. Without I'm, doubt. I'm spelling, mate. Oh, yeah. My wallet's spelling until yeah. the new year. I look for the ones that had a bad run last start because I find I look for a reason for them to bounce back. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. but uh, that's my thoughts on the race. Mm -hmm.